we are live on the um, Zoom platform. So people will start coming in. And then I'll just get ready to go live. So in five, four, three, two, one. Hi everyone, it's Eleanor here from Fashion and Beauty. Today we are joined by VZ Chamboco, owner of Second Skin Therapy in London. And we're going to be talking about surviving the coronavirus as a new business owner, as well as preparing to reopen. Um, we'll also have time for questions at the end, so please do send any questions through that you have. Um, and thank you very much VZ for joining us today. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. So you celebrated Second Skin Therapy's first year in business right in the height of lockdown. Um, having been open for just over a year, can you share how the coronavirus pandemic has impacted you as a fairly new business owner? Um, well, yes, it was, <laughs> it was so interesting having to celebrate birthday number one, as you say, in the middle of lockdown. Um, you know, it was totally muted as compared to the biggest celebration I would have liked to have. But um, I suppose the biggest impact has been financial, as it has been for us all. Um, you know, before the uh, lockdown came in, or before COVID became a pandemic or uh, hit us like this, I had a lot of plans. I had a lot of um, projections I had made in terms of business growth, uh, in terms of where I would have liked the business to go, uh, in terms of where I foresaw the business, um, uh, the direction the business uh, was taking as the year went on. And so I had to kind of shelve all of those plans. Um, and um, financially as well, just in terms of what we could have, what we all could have been taking leading up to this high season. I think this is the busiest time of year for us all. So it's been a huge blow to have to shut our doors when, you know, knowing that this is the time that we really make our money. Um, and, you know, in terms of being a new business as well, having had loans that I have to repay, uh, I've not been able to repay them at the speed at which I would have liked to. So, yeah, financial has been the biggest hit of all. Yeah, I can imagine. And how did the government's first announcement that beauty businesses could reopen but not perform um, treatments on the face, how did that affect your business? Because you do other things other than facials, don't you? So it must have been a bit of a... A tricky situation to be in. It really was and given that we had been given the first tentative date of the 4th of August, 4th of July rather, um, and then having that taken away from us and then given the next date to the 13th of July but it was almost like um, being given a green light but wait no it's still amber. You can only, we can let you open your doors but you can only do so much. Um, so in one way, it's been great to open my doors. I opened last week, Tuesday on the 14th, but um, facial treatments do contribute to around 60 to 70% of my overall business. So it's still a huge hit. Um, I have to appreciate that I can still connect with my clients and that I can still get some clients coming in for uh, some of the other body treatments that I offer but I'm still having to contend with their requests for facial treatments and you know still it just feels to have to still say no just it's a huge blow um there's nothing that I could do differently on the 1st of August in terms of keeping my clients safe that I couldn't do today um so it's it's a shame it's just it feels so unnecessary and we're all so disappointed um and yeah it's hard to fathom but I'm glad to at least get going. Absolutely. And you've been doing um, a lot of virtual um, consultations, haven't you? So has, how has that been for um, your business during the lockdown? Virtual consultations have been a great addition. Um, it was hard for a lot of my clients who were mid-journey with their skincare treatments and especially hard for a lot of clients who were just at the start of their journeys when lockdown hit. You know, they felt abandoned and I felt like I was abandoning them. So virtual consultations were a way for us to still meet in the middle. Yes, I wasn't able to provide treatments, but I was still able to uh, provide assessment, give them guidance, help them with um, fulfilling their product needs and help them to still get to a point of uh, the skin health journey that they're on. 
Um, so it's been a fantastic addition. I've been able to connect with people that I wouldn't have been able to before. Um, it's introduced me to a whole new client base. I've had connections with clients in Europe um, and in parts of Africa since the lockdown. So it's, it's been wonderful. Um, I can't believe I didn't do this before. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing that I guess it's really opened up a whole new um, client base and it doesn't matter where that client is, it, it can be anywhere in the world with a virtual consultation. <laughs> Absolutely, I've taken myself from being limited to the treatment room and just opened up a world of possibilities and it's so great for people who don't necessarily want to have treatments, there are still, there's still that group of client that doesn't necessarily want to come in. Um, but yeah, wonderful for people to still be able to connect with us that way get the advice that they need, have the assessments that they need, um, and move forward. Amazing. And now that we do have a date for facial treatments, um, a lot of businesses will be really pleased by that news. Um, what was it like when you received that news? Oh, such a relief. <laughs> <laughs> I think when the news came in, I think I had texts going off over here, I had calls over here, I had emails from clients over here. So social media was going wild. So it was a huge relief for everybody, therapists and clients alike. Um, yeah, we just feel like we've got our power back, I think. Um, we just feel like we can be useful again. Um, so yeah, it's, it's such great news. Uh, I've been getting people booked in. I've been speaking to people already. Um, yeah, it's nice to be able to, to plan for it. <laughs> Absolutely. And what sort of plans have you been making? What was kind of the first thing you did when you found out the news? Um, well, definitely making contact. So the news came, I think the news came Thursday last week. So I had already been open um, and I'd already been open. I'd already had my risk assessment done. I'd already uh, prepared to make sure that I was treating or functioning in a safe manner. Um, so once we were told that we were able to do facial treatments from the 1st of August, yeah, it was just a case of getting people in because I'm ready. We've been ready. Just yeah. contact now and getting them in. I'm waiting for the date. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And um, what sort of um, types of PP have you kind of invested in? I know that a lot of people um, watching will be interested to see like what other business owners have got. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what PP you've um, got in your business? Sure. Well, it's just me working on my own. So I don't uh, have a large waiting area. Um, although I have a little reception desk in the front of my business. Um, so I've put up a Perspex screen so that when I'm speaking to clients at the beginning or the end of the treatment, we can still communicate with each other that way without having to wear masks. Uh, but when it comes to the treatment room, well, I have a hand sanitizer for them to sanitize their hands on entry and exit. So that's what I'm asking my clients to do. Um, and I'm asking them to come in wearing a mask. But when it comes to actual treatments, I'll show you. I have my mask here. Amazing. Mask on, and I keep it on for the duration. I've got my visor here. So I found one that was really comfortable. I've seen the ones that are real really heavy on the head, it's like big headbands, but I found one that I can just slot on, which is much more comfortable. That's good. That's Does it um, fog up at all? Does it get misty? Or it doesn't, do actually. That? It doesn't. It's quite good. Um, it's got pretty good coverage uh, coming down this far, so it's covering my neck. And with my mask on, it's fitting below my mask. So. I feel good to go. My clients feel safe. And the clients have been really well receptive of it as well. Um, in, in one way, they put so much trust in us and it's such a vulnerable um, area for them to be in the treatment room, you know. So in one, on one hand, it's really hard wearing the mask because it's as though you're concealing part of your identity. Um, there's a lot of trust that comes in with being able to see somebody's whole face. Mm. Um, so we're kind of bridging that gap a little bit by wearing the masks, although we have to, um, we're bridging that gap. And so I was a little worried about how the clients might receive that, but it's been really well received. I think clients are just glad to know that we are taking precautions and we are taking steps. Um, I'm also wearing an apron, which I dispose of. 
for their retreatment or after every treatment. And of course, I'll wash my hands before and after services, before putting gloves on. So I've got it all going on. Amazing. <laughs> so prepared. And it's good to share actually what, because um, I know a lot of people have struggled with the visors and they feel like if they've, if you've got glasses as well there's so many things that don't quite fit so it's good if you find a good one that works and you can wear it all day long because it's got to be comfortable hasn't it it's got to be comfortable if we're wearing that for all of these hours and uh i just knew i couldn't wear the ones with the big heavy bands mm. um, in the front and behind my head so this one has been perfect um i've got a few of those that i just rotate and then i disinfect them at the end of the day Awesome. And during lockdown, I know that you um, touched on the virtual consultations and how successful they were. Um, can you share some of the benefits of doing those? And do you think it's something that you'll incorporate into your business permanently? Oh, I'll definitely keep it. It's definitely here to stay. Um, as I say, I can't imagine, I can't think why I didn't do them before. It's so, it's just so simple. I think we're so used to the human factor when it comes to our business. And uh, we're so used to being face to face with our clients and putting our hands on our clients and um, virtual, there's nothing that can transcend that, but virtual consultations are the next best thing. So definitely here to stay for those clients that may not be able to reach the salon, um, for those that may not be in your country, but perhaps they like what you're offering um, and you know, want a piece of your advice. So it's one of the major benefits has just been expanding my scope in that way. Um, it's helped to keep me going during lockdown. It's helped to uh, prop up the finances a little bit um, in terms of being able to connect with clients that way and uh, send them their skincare. So massive benefit to the business, uh, massive, um, a great addition and definitely here to stay. It sounds like it's a good, um, a good thing that has come out of the lockdown really is like different ways of working and how they can kind of be implemented um, for the future as well. Yeah, exactly. Different ways of working. We are able to um, provide results, not just in the treatment room anymore. And that's wonderful. Amazing. And um, as you're a fairly new business owner, um, for those who are interested in opening up their business, um, how would you go about building a client base if you're first starting out and wanting to open your own clinic or your own salon? Um, well, I suppose in today's society, we rely so much on recommendations. I know when it comes to going to eat somewhere new or going somewhere new, I'm, I'm going to look at reviews. I'm going to go on Google and see what the reviews are saying. So I expect the same of my customers. Um, so it's important not only to do a great job in the treatment room, but um, to get yourself known outside of it as well. So go up and down your street in your local area, get to know your neighbors, uh, because once they know you, then they can talk about you as well. Um, for me, it was a good idea to offer a few treatments to some key people within certain businesses. Once they were able to get a treatment from me and maybe build a bit of rapport, uh, they were then able to vouch for me, which is counted for a lot. Um, because it's no good having a business if nobody knows about you, if nobody even in your immediate area knows about you. Uh, let's see, Facebook groups are really great. They spark a lot of engagement. So I've, I've been able to get myself onto a few and connect with a few clients in that way as well. Um, and I think it's really important to remember to encourage your clients to review you. Again, being in such a recommendation or review-based society, it's really important um, to have people relay their experiences with you. I know for myself that a lot of new clients that I've gained um, during this journey have come to me saying, oh, I had a look at your reviews and what drew me in was how great they were, uh, as opposed to other businesses perhaps. So get the reviews in. People like rewards, so loyalty schemes are really great. That accounts for a lot. They like to feel as though many people like to be a part of your journey. And so having a loyalty scheme in place, whether it comes to treatment, so whether it comes to product redemption, um, it makes them feel like they're a part of your journey. It makes them feel appreciated. Um, and speaking of rewards, refer a friend cards have gone a long way for me as well, because people will talk 
about you with their friends. They'll talk about you with their colleagues, with their families. And so incentivize them to talk about you a little more. Um, and I found that to make a huge difference as well. Amazing. What kind of rewards do you offer for, um, for loyalty? Is there anything that you found really works in your business? Um, well, I have, I have to kind of divide the loyalty between the, um, the treatments that I offer. For example, it's no, it's no good giving the same loyalty points to somebody that comes in for a regular wax that I give to somebody that comes in for facials twice a month. Um, they're spending, you know, very different amounts of money. Um, and so I have loyalty schemes based on the amount that they're spending. And then I also have loyalty, separate loyalty schemes based on the products that they're buying. Uh, so yeah, I, I have a few schemes going that I uh, sort of present to different clients that are coming in for different reasons. My wax clients generally tend to come in just for waxing. Some of them cross over, but I have a lot of facial clients who will come in just for facials. So I found it's not fair to give them the same rewards. I'll divide it a little. Yeah, that sounds like a good, um, a good system. And yeah, who doesn't like uh, being rewarded as well? So it's a good way to <laughs> reward your clients. Um, what's your advice for other new biz beauty businesses out there? Um, say if you're wanting to set up your own business, what advice would you give someone? Um, I think it's really important to build your identity and to find your niche within the industry. I think you really have to know who you are and what you're presenting uh, to your client. And you also have to have a really good idea of the type of client that you want to attract. Uh, you know, if you haven't established your identity, then the client won't know your identity. They won't really know how they might fit into your scheme or what you might be able to offer them. Um, so that's number one. And being clear on your identity helps you to draw in your ideal uh, client. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that's the main thing really, just knowing who you are. Um, it, it helps you to be able to talk about yourself and what you do with more focus. It helps the client to understand you better. It helps them to make a choice um, as to why they might come to you versus going somewhere else. Definitely good advice. Um, and if you could give yourself one piece of advice um, when you were, your past self, a piece of advice when you were setting up your business, what would you, what would you tell yourself? Um, I would put myself out there a lot more. <laughs> Thinking back or looking back, I think I sort of hit a lot in the beginning. Um, and it's something I've had to learn. I've never been very good. Well, I've had to really learn to be better at the marketing aspect of the business, considering that I, I do work alone. Um, I've had to put that hat on and just become really good at it. And so it's these days people want to see who you are. They want to see the face behind the business. It helps them connect more to the business. They want to, as I say, feel part of your journey. Um, so I would definitely put myself out there a lot more, uh, whether it's social media, whether it's, um, as I mentioned earlier, just in the local area, getting to know other businesses, collaborating with other businesses. Um, yeah. That's what I would tell my, my former self. Just don't be so scared. Get out there. People want to know who you are. And it builds trust. It draws people towards you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what do you think the future of the industry will look like post-coronavirus? Are there any factors in the industry that you think will change dramatically? I think that it will raise standards overall within the industry. Given that we have to be I think as an industry, we've always known that we have to be uh, good with uh, keeping client records, um, slash track and trace as it's known these days now. Um, we've always known that we have to be vigilant with sanitation. Um, we've always tried to maintain as clean environments as we can. But I think that we're just having to look at all of those areas so much more closely um, and pay so much more attention. So I think overall it's going to raise industry standards when it comes to cleanliness and sanitation within our businesses. Uh, and I think as well, clients will be more demanding when it comes to what they're looking for or uh, the experience that they expect to have within your environment. I think they'll want to know that you're putting gloves on for the service. Uh, they'll want to know that uh, you know, you've, little things cleaned your wax pot from one 
fine to the next. You know, they'll want to feel like they're uh, lying on fresh bedding or fresh linen. So yeah, I think overall it will just raise the industry standards. It'll make us more aware, more vigilant, more vigilant, um, which is a great thing. I'll go on, yeah. Absolutely. And what are some of the ways that you're communicating to clients about all these measures that you're taking? Are there any effective ways that you've found that have been good? Uh, well, definitely direct mail. I put an, an email out or I've reiterated it in a few of my emails what I've been doing um, to keep them informed. Um, you know, it's important for them to feel like they're coming into a safe environment and it's important for them to feel or to know that I'm conscious of their experience. So I've mentioned in their emails that uh, I've let them know what I'm doing in terms of what I will be wearing, what to expect when they come in for treatment. Um, I've asked them to, for example, come in on time for their appointments so that we're not making use of the waiting area. I've asked them to remember to sanitize their hands on entry and on exit of the building. Uh, I've asked them to make prepayments where they can or at least to be able to pay by card. Um, and I've also, as I say, let them know what I'm doing, spacing out appointments, um, sanitizing in between appointments, using as many disposable items as I can. So uh, disposable headbands where I can, or disposable towels, um, the disposable apron that I'll be wearing here, and of course disposable masks. So communicating directly with them via email has been good. I've had a few people coming back with questions. So, you know, they definitely, not all will read the emails, but you know, the ones that are, I guess, most conscious of the fact will read the emails and then uh, spark a conversation there. But of course, social media is really good. We've got to keep people informed on that platform as well. Um, I've put up banners uh, so that it's all kind of easily laid out uh, and written out as to what I'm asking them to do and what they can expect of me. Awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about your career before you set up your business um, and the experiences that kind of led you to where you are now? Sure. So I've been in business for about 16 years now and uh, I started working in London. Um, I worked in a few salons in and around London uh, and then I decided that I wanted to move on to the more clinical aspect of the business. So uh, I did some further training and then I worked in a laser clinic for a while. Um, beyond that, I decided that I wanted to leave London for a while, get out of the city. And I explored a few options, but I ended up going to work on ships. And I did that for about six years. So I worked at a company where I had to, uh, it was an American company and they split us up into categories. So you had to choose, being an all-rounder, I was able to choose whether I wanted to specialize in nails or whether I wanted to specialize in massage or whether I wanted to specialize in aesthetics. So I chose aesthetics because that was already developing as a passion of mine. Uh, so I would see my clients in the spa providing facial and waxing services. And I did that on and off for six years. In between, I'd be back in London, I would be temping. I was with a temping agency and over the years I've got up a lot of contacts and so I would visit businesses on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-week -week basis and help them out for the day or for the week or for the month or however long it might have been, which I found really exciting. I loved that time of my life. I loved that aspect of the industry, being able to move around a little bit and see how different people worked and see the different setups. I think it contributed so much to my knowledge that I have now just having that exposure to how other businesses were operating and to um, how to what clients were expecting in different areas. Um, it helped me hone my skills, I think, having all of that exposure in lots of different places um, between working on the ships and seeing international skins, if you like, as well as working in London and seeing what the, uh, what the industry was offering here. It helped me to hone my skills. It helped me to uh, establish my identity and figure out what I wanted to present uh, when I was ready. So I came off the ships about two years ago and then that's when I started searching for my own premises. I'd known all along that I wanted to set myself up in business, but I knew that I needed to go on the journey just to basically get it out of my system. And I enjoyed being a little nomadic. Uh, I enjoyed working around the industry in lots of different aspects. 
And uh, yeah, by the time I was ready, found my premises. And it was May last year when I set up here. So I enjoyed it. And um, when did you know that you wanted to set up your own business? Was there kind of like a defining moment or was it something that you've always wanted to do? I suppose it's something I've always wanted to do. My mum uh, is a midwife. She's always had her own mother and baby clinic. So I've always watched her run a business. And I think the passion just filtered down <laughs> into the next generation, i.e. me. Uh, so it's, it's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, yeah, it was just a matter of timing. It was just a matter of collating what I felt I needed to collate and being ready to give it the commitment it needed. Awesome. Um, we're going to move on to the Q&A section in a moment. So for anyone watching who's got any questions for Lizzie, then please do um, pop them through. Um, what's been popular? What are people booking in for now that people will be able to go back to have facials and treatments on the 1st of August? Is there anything that people have really been demanding in services? I'm finding that a lot of people are booking the more luxury facials, the longer facials. I think people have just missed the human contact. They've missed feeling looked after, feeling pampered. And so I'm not seeing a lot of the quick sessions. I'm seeing a lot of the longer sessions. And I'm also seeing that people are booking in for more results-based treatments. Um, I, I guess people have had a lot of time to look at their skins and assess their skins and um, have had a, a long time to sort of build up to wanting to really sort their skins out now. So yeah, lots of longer treatments and definitely results-based. Amazing. Um, Gillian on Facebook has asked, um, where did you get the visor from that you showed us earlier? I just got it from eBay. So I think it was $4.99 on eBay and it's fantastic. It's got a little uh, band here. It looks like an Alice band, um, like a sideways Alice band, and it just slots on and it fits securely. And my skin is very oily. <laughs> so sometimes it slides down in the middle of the day, but I feel if I prop it up towards the top of my hairline, then it kind of sits a bit better. But in between clients, you're cleaning your visor anyway. Um, so that helps to shift some of the oil that settles on my skin, but yeah, just eBay. Awesome. Good. And we've had another question. Um, have you changed the prices of your services at all um, post-coronavirus? I decided not to. I know that a lot of businesses have had to because they've had to space apart their appointments a lot more and they've had to perhaps reduce the size of their staff. Um, but I decided not to. I think the benefit for me of working alone has meant that I've not had to change a lot within the way that I work. So um, the amount of clients that I can see in one day, the max amount of clients won't change or hasn't changed because it's just me. And uh, the PPE that I'm wearing, we would have had most of the PPE minus the visor, I would have had anyway. I was using it for some of my treatments anyway, so yes, I'm going through a little more PPE, uh, but I decided not to change my prices. Uh, if somebody, for example, comes in for a treatment and they don't have a mask, then I might ask them for a pound for a mask. But because my business model hasn't changed so much, I've not had to downsize in many ways. I've kept my prices the same. Brilliant. Thank you for answering that. Um, Gillian says she agrees with that. Um, well, you've had another question. Are you trained in ACP? Trained in ACP? I'm not entirely certain what that is. Maybe if, um, Gillian, if you could elaborate on that, I'm not too sure um, what that is. But if you um, reply back to your comment, we can maybe um, put that forward to these. E. Um, what else have we got here? Um, do you offer threading in your business? No, no threading. No. I just wax the brows. Yeah. So there's no, no threading. Um, do you find clients also booking more waxing treatments? Yeah, I am getting a lot of waxing treatments coming through. Um, there's been four months of <laughs> hair that, I've, that they might have held on to. Um, and for those that have decided to shave, I think they're just sick of it and have been keen to get back to their waxing. Uh, there are a few, since the boys have opened up, there are a few people going on holidays. So waxing has been coming through. Yeah, quite well. That's good. Lots of regulars and also lots of newbies. 
Amazing. Um, oh, Gillian's replied back. She says, um, ACP, advanced cosmetic procedures um, such as electrosis. Ah, okay. Well, I am trained in electrolysis. Um, I trained back when I did my training, my uh, Sudesco training back in 2005. So yes, I'm trained in, in, in electrolysis. Um, I'm not trained in sclerotherapy though, the advanced version of electrolysis. Um, I'm trained in, I have my core of knowledge training, my laser training. So I received my training, I'd say, in, from different uh, areas rather than getting it under one umbrella. So maybe that's why I couldn't answer the ACP question. But yes, I have some advanced training that I've done separately. Amazing. And as um, a fairly new business owner, for others who are in a similar boat to you, what advice would you give to them if they're kind of planning for reopening and they're still fairly new with their business? Mm. Um, I would just encourage them to hit the ground running. I think their clients will be excited to see them as much as they will be excited to see their clients. Just um, run through what you, how you plan to present yourself, run through, do your, your risk assessment, um, you know, do a walk through your salon to make sure that you're uh, keeping your standards as high as you probably were initially. Uh, try to assess from a client's point of view. We may know that we're operating in a very safe manner, but sometimes the clients want a little visual confirmation of that. So I, for example, have my hand sanitizer on view. I have a little sign to... Uh, to encourage the clients to use it. If they don't, I'll always prompt them. Um, but the little signs help. Um, yeah, and the little visual prompts. So I'll keep a little uh, turn of my wipes, my uh, disinfectant wipes nearby in the reception area, just so that they can see, they can have the verification that I'm staying on top of things. Um, yeah, so don't, don't be afraid, don't be hesitant. Just um, go in knowing that you're keeping your client as safe as you can and I think they'll appreciate it. Amazing. I think um, that's all we have time for now. But, um, thank you so much, Vizi, for joining us and sharing um, all your advice for reopening um, as a new business owner. And I wish you all the best of luck with the rest of your reopening for the 1st of August. Thank you so much. Thank you for this. It's been really great to chat to you uh, and to talk about my business. I love talking about my business. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. And um, yeah. It's been brilliant to speak with you. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye. Bye.